Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, estimate a blessed fit line by actually using uh, two of our points on our line. So before we do that, we kind of want to get an idea of you know, what exactly are these points going to kind of look at look like so we can estimate our best fit line. So we can see we have some kind of negative values in here. So I'm going to grab an x and a y axis here. All right. And I'm just going to plot my points. And it looks like the maximum number I go through is 12. So I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So the first thing we're going to want to do is plot these points. So I can have 12 comma negative 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh, that's out of there, over to there. And actually, you know what we're going to do? Let's count. Let's just label these points here so then I remember that I have them. So that's A. And then I'll do B, which would be 3, negative 7. So 1, 2, 3, down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, I can do C, negative 1, negative 4. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, let's see, D, negative 5, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. And then I have E, negative 10, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One, two, three. OK, so when looking at creating kind of like a best fit line here, um, you know, eh, where'd my line things? OK, so basically what we want to do is kind of decide, you know, what would be kind of some good points to kind of run our best fit line through. And you can see that kind of looking at our two points between E and A, that I'm going to have D will be above it and C and B will be below it. And remember, when we're looking and creating a best fit line, that's really like bad representation. But we're looking into creating a best fit line. Basically, our kind of idea is to represent the data the best we can, but not only represent the data the best we can, um, but have you know, some points above and below. And we kind of want to keep those points that are above and below equal distance from our best fit line. So it looks like if I can run a line between E and A, I will match that. I'll have a point above and then two points below. All right. And what's nice about choosing a best fit line that's between two points is we can write a linear equation to model our best fit line. So remember e, which is negative 10, negative 10x, which we'll say is xy, and then a I'll represent as xy. Now, when we, have to, when we need to write an equation between two points, we need to make sure we differentiate our two points. So I'll call this x1, y1, and x2, y2. The first thing I want to do is determine the slope, which is the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates. What am I doing? So therefore, um, what I'll have here is y2, which is negative 12, minus 3, all over x2, which is 12, minus a negative 10. So negative 12 minus 3 is going to be a negative 15. 12 minus 10 is going to be add, so that would be a positive 22. Hmm, that does not look like fun. Let's just double check I wrote down these points correctly. Negative 10, 3, positive 12, 12. I didn't do any mistakes wrong, did I? Negative 12 minus 3, that looks right. 12 minus negative 10. All right, so that's my slope. So m equals a negative 15 over 22. Cool. Now, to be able to determine what my other value is, I need to solve for b. Now, to solve for b, what I'm, going to, what I'm going to do in this problem is I am going to plug in my slope as well as a coordinate point in for x and y using slope-intercept form. So I have y equals mx plus b. I know what my new slope is, which is negative 15 over 22. Now what I'm going to do is I don't know the values of x and y, but x and y represent any point that could be, a mile, any point that could be on my line. So I'm going to plug in the points that I do know that are on my line, which would be, uh, let's do negative 10 and 3. So I have 3 in for y, and then I have negative 15 over 22 times 10 plus b. Hmm, this doesn't sound like fun. But OK, multiply that over. 3 equals, um, that's going to be a negative 150 over 22 plus b. Now I need to solve for b, so I'll add 150 over 22 to both sides. 
So therefore, I have 3 plus 150 over 22. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I need to get them to be the same denominator. So to do that, I need to multiply 22 on top and bottom times 3 over 1. So therefore, I have uh, 60, 66 over 22 plus 150 over 22. And then now I can simply add these, which would be 216 over 22, right? Follow me? <laughs> Maybe. Um, so now that's going to be my new value of b. So b equals 216 over 22. And b should be negative. So I did mess up somewhere. Ah, that's a negative. Yes, I already knew that. That is a negative slope. Negative 150. Add that. 12, negative 12. Negative y2 minus y1. Negative 12 minus 3 is negative 15. x2. x2 is 12 minus x1, which is 10. Plug that in. x. Negative 10, so that's positive. Forgot that negative 10. So that's going to be positive, so you've got to subtract. So that's actually a negative. Negative. So therefore, that's going to be 50, and then minus 16 would be 84. Negative 84 over 22. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I forgot to plug in this negative 10. So that becomes negative. So that's negative. So that means, no, that means that's positive. And then we need to subtract on both sides. OK, so therefore, I'm going to subtract 50, which would leave me um, 16 left over. So it'd be a negative 84 over 22. That means b equals negative 84 over 22. Now my linear equation is y equals a slope of negative 15 over 22x minus 84 over 22, which is, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and up, just about. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write a best fit line using two points of a scatter plot. Thanks.